is no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. And I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like power of Jesus. Now we we'll believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like his power. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that he can move. We'll praise the name makes the way there's nothing that our god there's nothing he can't do there's nothing that our god can do there's not a prison wall he can't break through we'll praise a name that makes the way there's nothing that our god can I will believe. So I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. And I will believe for greater things. There's no power. There's no power like our Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree, there's no power like the power of Jesus. There's no power like his power, there's no power like his power, he's so great. Everything's possible through him, everything is possible. Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Everyone say praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbors and say, it's going to be a great night. All right, you may be seated for a few moments. Get some announcements out of the way, and then, uh, then we'll go right back into worship. Then Pastor Billy be here to minister tonight. But uh, my name is Pastor David Cook. How many are here for the very first time? This is your very first crusade. Put your hand up. Hallelujah. Let's give him a big hand. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And... Uh, those that, uh, again, they're here for the first time, I'll give instructions later about the ministry time, how Pastor Billy operates, but we'll get to that in a moment. Tonight, there's three things I want to talk about initially. Website, emails, texting. Everyone say that with me. Website, emails, texting. So we're going to start with the website. For 13 years now, every crusade we have, I say, if you want any information about the schedule, the itinerary, any dates, or all that kind of stuff, go to touchingtoronto.com. Say that with me. TouchingToronto.com. Real easy. You got flyers when you came in. But if you forget where the meeting's going to be, what's been happening is when we change locations, people, they end up the, the, old, the old location. <laughs> and I thought, oh, did you not take the flyer? Oh, did you not read the emails? Oh, did you not look at the website? So anyways, I want to put the ball in your court tonight. This is family night. Say, I'm in the family. <laughs> All right. So just, just want to kind of do some cleaning up here. Because obviously uh, people don't hear, they don't know, don't understand. So I want to really clarify it tonight. So website, 24-7. And we want you to go there and subscribe. That is the legal way, the easy way. It takes one minute. So if you're not on the email list, you can go home or do it tonight, whatever, and subscribe. And you go to the touchingtoronto.com. I would say touchingtoronto.com. All right. Ha scroll halfway down, three quarters of the way down the, fr the front page there, and you'll see subscribe. Put your name, email in, done. It, it happens real quick. So how many did not, I sent out two emails this week, how many did not get an email from me? Put your hand up. So everyone got an email? If you didn't get an email, put your hand up. Just wave it to me. Okay. All right. So 
just so you know what we're doing on our end, everything we're doing with the texting, we'll talk about in a moment, is to really put information in your hands to help you. So out of uh, 1, 000, over 1,000 emails they sent out twice this week, the average amount of emails that get opened is about 35%. The industry, the religious industry, 35 to 40%. So we'll just say 35%. So that means of over 1,000 emails I sent out twice this week, everyone say twice, all right, only about 300 opened them, 350. So that means 700 people did not open those emails. I can't help you. Turn to your neighbor and say, he can't help you. <laughs> you have to open your own emails, amen? And one other note there, those that aren't tech savvy, uh, look in your junk mail or your spam folder. It could be there. That, that, so I'm saying that to the ones that have signed up but you're not getting the emails, all right? There's about eight or nine that bounce back. We'll take care of that. We'll get in contact with you. But I'm trying to simplify this because obviously people don't fully understand or comprehend what we're trying to do here. Again, the reason we're doing this, and the ushers, they're going to, uh, in a moment, they're going to stand up and pass out a card to you. Now, we prefer you go and do it automatically, like I just described. I'm not going to scroll through it. Go, go online and do it, and it's done. All right? But if you can't, for whatever reason, the ushers, they're going to pass out a card in a moment when I'm done here. And you just put your name and email on there. There's at least a dozen that I could not enter into the system. If there's one digit that's wrong, it's not going to happen. So some are writing in tongues, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Others are writing in Spanish, others are writing in English. So I don't know. So that's why it's just easy to do it. Go online and just uh, enter your information. But for whatever reason, if you can't, we're going to pass you a card. You put your name, and you're going to print real clear your email address, okay? That takes care of the emails. The last part is texting. Uh, Steve, you can put that up there. Okay. We started the pl uh, platform for texting. And the reason for this is, again, it's to benefit you. It costs us money, but we want to help you. If now we're approaching winter, we don't have any scheduled in the next few months except November. Uh, but if there's a snowstorm or Pastor Billy's flight is delayed, we want to be able to text you immediately and say, meeting changed, canceled, move here, go there, whatever. Uh, we want to keep you informed because some people travel from provinces away, uh, from the U.S., whatever. But we want to be able to text you and say the meeting has been changed or canceled or whatever, okay? So we're doing that for your benefit. If you don't want to be on the texting program, that's up to you. You don't have to, okay? And uh, we're doing it this way. By the way, that was in those emails this week, peer instructions. So all I can't see from here, but all I don't know, you text the word join. Everyone say join. join. Just text to that number and you'll get an email or a text right back. You click on done. You're in the system. So again, if there is a snowstorm or anything like that, you'll be notified immediately, especially if you're driving for several hours away, that, oh, wait a minute, it's been canceled or changed or whatever. Okay? Everyone got that? You understand that? Okay? Praise the Lord. So if you don't, you're not getting the emails, write it down. Write down that number and the word join. It's real simple. Say to your neighbor, it's real simple. <laughs> okay, uh, those that want uh, to be added manually into the email system, you don't know how to do it automatically online, put your hand up. The ushers will come back with a card right now. Anybody, just if you want to, hopefully you, most of you want to do it yourself online automatically. It's legal. It's all done. Okay, keep your hands up till the ushers get there. Okay, wonderful. Where's the other one, Ernie? You Someone over here. Put your hand up high till they get there. Just wave it till the usher gets there. Okay, great. I know it took a little more time than that as usual, but how many said, how many can say that's clear? Okay, about 40 of you. Okay, that's, that's great. Uh, let's move on to the last few announcements here. And uh, at any time, you can always email us and we can get back to you. But we like to keep things automated. It takes a lot of time to enter things manually. And so we want to avoid that, plus all the mistakes and all the people that write in tongues. Hallelujah. Everyone say, praise the Lord. Okay, so uh, let me see how we do it. And the cards for the, those who put your hands up for those cards, put in the offering bucket as it comes by tonight. All right, uh, no children's ministry. We're live streaming, so there's no photos, no recording, uh, no flyers, uh, you know, advertising some other meeting. This is our meeting, so none of that happens here. Don't sit in reserved seating. Turn off your cell phones. How many have a cell phone? 
Okay, I got a few liars in the building too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn off your cell phones or mute them. Okay, we appreciate that. And uh, ministry time, when Pastor Billy comes in tonight as he starts to minister, he'll start to call out certain sicknesses and diseases. Now, everything is led, he's led by the Holy Spirit. So anything can happen, anything can change at any moment. Okay, so just for those who are here for the first time, just want to let you know that. But basically, he'll call a certain sickness or disease. And we ask as he starts calling them out, Go to the left side, the right side of the building, okay, and line up. There will be people at the front that will help you. Don't come running up the, uh, the middle aisles. Go to the side aisles. And as he specifically comes right to you and points you, come here, okay? Uh, the reason he does that is because he's not going to call. Every, there's people here that have certain sickness and diseases. Well, if he's calling a right elbow, don't come up because you've got a left ankle problem, okay? Make it that simple because he's being led by the Spirit and wait patiently and expect. Everyone say expect. <laughs> All right. We got up to about 60% there. Praise the Lord. Steve, let's show the video. Our next meet will be right back here. next Touching Toronto meeting. And if you know someone who needs a healing touch, why not invite them to come and receive their miracle breakthrough? Your simple invitation could change their lives forever. Praise the Lord. Well, let's stand up to worship the King. And also those that want to volunteer, go to the, the desk, the volunteer table back there and get an application. Fill that in and we'll insert you into the, the lineup. And uh, we're looking forward to having... More people join the volunteer team. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, we've got to wake up this crowd tonight, guys. Yeah. Everyone say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. Are you ready to praise the King? Amen. Are you expecting tonight? Yeah. You got your Holy Ghost shoes on tonight. Amen. You're ready for the Holy Ghost move tonight. Hallelujah. Well, let's worship the King like you believe it tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Who came expecting a miracle tonight? Amen. Did you come expecting it? We got to come with that expectation, expecting our God to move. He is faithful to move. We're going to see those victories. Oh, we worship you. We're going to sing, I'll see a victory. And I'm going to see a victory. And I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. And I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Sing it again. I'm going to see. And I'm going to see a victory. And I'm going to see a victory. And for the battle belongs to you. Lord, and I'm going to see a victory, and I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. We're going to see a victory tonight. God, we expect those miracles to happen. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God, will never fail.
it for good. Amen. You turn it for good. Well, that's what he's doing here tonight. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. He turns it for good.
going just praise his name just lift praise to him he wants to hear you he wants to be invited by you in this space god you we welcome you here holy spirit have your way jesus oh
shout to our king. He is great. This is a place where he dwells. Jesus, we welcome you. Faithful, faithful, our God is faithful. He's so faithful. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Sing it together with me. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Come on, nothing. women and 20% men. And a whole lot of sound system. Wow. Wow. 80% women, 20 percent 80% women, 20% men. Let's even this out a little bit. Everything, oh, everything. come on, yes, every with. Come on, give him a shout. Come on, come on, every hand up all over the place. Let's just welcome the Holy Spirit tonight. You know, in a personal way, you welcome him in your seat where you are. You know more than anybody what you would like to extract out of this meeting tonight. And generally speaking, you want to be stronger, closer, all of that. Maybe there's a particular healing that you need or a breakthrough that you're seeking. It's important that within the group, you declare your own situation. Don't ever ride the wave of the group. You could end up in the wrong place. You could end up just never getting that petition answered. God wants to hear you. He wants to hear you. He wants you to put a value on that what you're seeking tonight. And sometimes we just depend upon the music to carry us or the preacher or the, even the crowd that's around us. He wants to know that you know him. That you believe he's your Jehovah Rapha. That he's your Jehovah Jireh. Net and Sahih. I mean, he, he just wants you to believe that. And he wants to hear it through you. He did three years ago, but he hasn't heard from you since. In a group, he's heard from you. But that personal cry. There's nothing that replaces that personal cry. That petition of, Lord, I, I need you. I'm fighting this on my own. And I need your help. I need the, the reinforcement of heaven. Oh, I need the reinforcement of heaven. You said if I bind it, you would bind it. You said if I would loosen it, then you would loosen it. You declare you want my engagement. You want me involved. Oh, God, I desire to be an imitator, not a spectator. You suffered for me. You died for me. You live for me. You intercede daily for me. I can surely declare to you my need tonight. Help me tonight. Be more vocal, more, more dramatic about this thing, whatever it may be that's affecting me. An attitude, a thought, a, a, a memory, a demon, a curse. I got to get rid of this. I got to walk out of here lighter. I can't continue to live heavy. I feel weighed down. I don't want to be weighed down. I feel strapped. I don't want to feel strapped. I feel limited. I don't want to be limited. I serve the God with no limitation. Come on, say, time to take the limits off God. Say it. <clears throat> Tonight's my night to take the limits off God. 
His will, His way, and His time. In Jesus' name. Come on, give Him a thunder of praise. Come on, give Him a thunder of praise. Oh, my God. Oh. Come on, turn around and greet somebody behind you and tell them tonight is a perfect night for your miracle. Come on, tell them. You may be seated all over the place, and it's so great to have you. Gord, I guess these steps will hold me, right? They're bigger than the other ones, Gord. You must have, you must have had those made just for me right there, I'll tell you. Hey, how many is glad to be here tonight at Peter and Paul? <laughs> Pastor, always good to see you, and I, I just never forget that time. How many years ago has that been at your church? 2011. We were at Pastor Sanja's church. I think that was our first touching Toronto. Yes. And we had that place jam-packed. And, and I think it was very hot that night. <laughs> hot in the Holy Ghost and, and, uh, and the temperature. And I remember so many of those people, I felt they were uh, pushing in. They were pressing in. It's important that you press in. A lot of people come to these services to, to hide behind somebody. When the gifts start moving, they go, oh, and they hide behind somebody because they, they don't want to be exposed. And we're not here to expose you. We, don't want, we want to expose your disease. Anything you bring into the light will die. Come on, anything you bring into the light will die. I mean, you, you, you can't keep it in there. You know, that's, what, that's why confession is good for the soul. But you've got to get that whatever you're dealing with out here, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. There's something about integrity with yourself. There's something about not lying to yourself. There's something about knowing when you need outside help. You know, because I know a lot of people to go to the grave early didn't have to go to the grave early. But they just thought they could handle the whole thing on them with, by themselves. Whether they were a little bit prideful or whether they were afraid or didn't want anybody to know or, you know, because we all want people to think that, you know, that we don't fight any devils. We don't get attacked with any diseases. We don't get as scared, you know, because we try and live up to the title or to the reputation. And the reality of it is, is that, boy, without grace, without the Holy Spirit, you know, without the promise we have that can really, that we can call on for leverage and for strength, we all face impossible odds to change that very much. How many of you have something in your house you've been wanting to change? You've been wanting to paint a wall for a long time. Anybody say out here tonight? You can't even get a wall painted. Come on, somebody. See what I'm saying about you? you. And, the, and the paint is sitting there in the garage. You know, on the roller and the pan, and you just can't seem to get over there to get that. It's difficult sometimes to get involved in the task that you know is going to make things better, even when it's with your own life. And there's, there's got to be a D-Day. There's got to be a day that you declare war on what is holding you back from giving God full, complete access. Because if, if you don't bring him into it, God does not always show up on his own. He, they had to invite him to the wedding feast. He was invited to the wedding feast. Thank God he was because they ran out of wine. He's a nice guy to have around when there's a shortage. Come on. But had they not invited him, he would not have been there to do that miracle. And sometimes we assume the danger, the, the death, it's a death wish, that, that assumption. That God knows where I am. He knows. He, that's all true. But sometimes he just likes to hear your humility expressed. Because, see, you're not just a, a regular guy anymore. You're a manager of a shoe store. You're a CEO. You, you know, you've advanced in life, you know, which gives you confidence, but not so much confidence. 
that you don't need G-O-D. How many know what G-O-D is? You, you need him as you grow and develop, you know, because when children need their parents, the, the whole thing with children is you want them to grow up so they don't need you. Any smart parent pushes his children ahead, ahead of them and makes them independent because they just, you don't know when they're going to have to be on their own. So in God, we're growing, and, 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 but in this hour, there's so much knowledge and so much, so much Holy Spirit that's being dropped on the church. You know, and yet when people show up and, and you have any kind of a discernment, you know, you realize a lot of people are just struggling. Yet nobody wants to respond to a word of knowledge. Nobody, when that word's called out, it's like, well, that's me, but I don't feel like going up tonight. I don't feel like going up tonight. I don't feel like falling down tonight. I don't feel like anybody catching me tonight. I don't wear the right clothes to fall in. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> so when you dress before you come to a meeting, you should say, okay, can I fall in these? That's what you, sh- <laughs> That's what you should ask yourself because it might happen, whether it's up here or right in your own seat. We're getting back to the days where John Wesley was preaching and people would just fall out of their chairs. They didn't need someone to touch them. They just were overwhelmed. They yielded. You can yield. You can yield right where you're sitting. You can, I mean, you can, go to a, you can go to a level you've never been to before, but you have to cooperate in, with the Holy Spirit. I, I don't really care if you come up here or fall under your seat. That's, I just want you to get help. I don't leave every meeting thinking, wow, we, can, we knocked down 65 people tonight. <laughs> you know, one preacher told me, he said, boy, I had a meeting. Brother Billy, they were laid out like cordwood. I said, well, did they get healed? Who cares if they're laid out? Did they get healed? The idea is that you get healed, that pain leaves your body, that your eyes get unblurry. You get unblind. You know, your ears open up. You're, you move, and my God, there's no more pain. You know, and you know yourself that you've been in a, a place where the presence resides. That's why, that's why I love coming to Toronto. Every, time, every meeting I've ever been here, I don't know how many years this is. Was it 12? Is it 13? I don't know. 13. 13? 13. Seven? I don't receive that in word. I don't receive that at all. Seven. Huh? 15? Don't get in a fight over years now. Leave it alone. Don't. We're all right. Everybody's right. But 13. 13 years, including the three years of COVID, Pastor Billy. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. Here we go. And listen to me. So tonight, I mean, just in, in the moment of this and tomorrow night, just make it, make it a new goal for you to, to let God in. To let God invade your space. And when you let him invade your space, let him come in and turn the light on and let him tell you what he sees. So often we invite God into our house, but we demand that he stays in the kitchen, <laughs> right? And then you tell him, well, I invited the Lord into my house. Yeah, you, you stuck him in the kitchen, and he's trying to get into the living room. <laughs> and you limit access. Don't limit access. Your inside needs touch. Not too many people come up and just say, man, my life is busted. I, I've been wounded. I've been sexually abused. You know, I've been really falsely accused. You know, I, I'm fighting a fear at a level that I can't handle. I sleep with the lights on. I have to have music on or the television on. These are serious issues. You know, they're issues that can really take away what? Your confidence and your boldness. Because deep down inside, whenever you, you want to be bold and tell somebody what God will do, you have to keep it out there in the realm of shallow because you know your own self. You're not letting him touch some of these areas that's still making you fearful because there's a voice talking to you that's threatening you, blackmailing you. There's a voice talking to you that says you're not even really saved. Well, maybe you're not. We can settle that real quick tonight. But you, ha- you have to really be able to answer these voices because we don't, we don't, you don't come here to stay confused. We try to be very clear about what we believe here, what's available to you. You know, some places in Canada in the wintertime, you can't get certain kinds of fruit. You know, unless they ship it in from Guatemala or Honduras. 
where they don't use any pesticides at all or they use too much pesticides. They don't have any pesticide laws. So they bring you in these raspberries or these cherries or this watermelon and I'm shot full of chemicals. You know, so in the United States and Canada, those pesticide laws are a little bit more restrictive. You know, but they just ship it in and, and, and if you don't know the difference between what you're eating, you could be ingesting things that are really breaking your cellular structure down making you more susceptible to viruses and germs and bacteria. Come on, somebody put your hands up right now. Come on, say, I believe tonight I'm going to get touched by the Holy Spirit. I'm bringing everything I can into the light. I'm going to let God touch it tonight. I don't want to struggle the rest of my years of something that could be resolved tonight. If it takes a few months... If it takes a year or two, at least I'm going to be active about it. It's going to be out in front of me and not chasing at my heels. I declare the Lord is my healer and my deliverer and my very soon coming king. Come on, somebody give God a big, big shout. Come on. Come on, I mean, why? I tell you, I mean, the, the longer this goes on in our culture, and I'm talking about the Western civilization, I mean, it's really imperative to me that the, the God that we believe in, I mean, he is the answer. But he's not the answer if we're going to hide him. You know, we got to really, we all have a story to tell. And sometimes you people ask me, why am I having so much warfare? It's not you that he's afraid of, it's your story. Everybody here has some kind of a healing story or God protected you or God, you know, uh, spared you this or he blessed you with this or he increased your money. Everybody here, I would think, pretty much has some evidence of a supernatural encounter with God. And that's what the devil hates. That's what makes you of an enemy and a feared enemy of the, of the devil is that that begins to hemorrhage outside your mouth. If you begin to really let some people know that you were healed of five gallstones or that you were set free of a spirit of fear, you know, or that you had cancer. And even though you had to have the surgery, the doctor said something strange happened in that operation, that when they got inside of you, it didn't, wasn't the same as the picture showed. The picture showed this, but when they got inside of you, it wasn't as bad as what the picture showed. There's a lot of unique stories in this room. You're not just living to take up space to say, I live to be 80 or 70 or 90. You're here so that there's some words that can come out of your mouth that's going to that's gonna set captives free. There's no better person to set a captive free than you that have a story that matches exactly what other people are going through. Somebody is going through exactly what you're going through. How, how selfish that is for us who come out here and get this from Jesus who not only gives you a breakthrough, but gives you information and weaponizes it. He weaponizes what you went through for other people. Because most people, what the devil, the big lie that hell sells is that nobody has what you have. And they don't have it as bad. And, 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 and don't tell anybody. And, you know, keep, uh, keep that code of silence in effect. Continue to look proper in church. It's your job that you're older now to be responsible and not let anybody, especially the young people, don't let any young people think that you've gone through something. And so you live a lie. And then young people go through stuff and they think this doesn't work. Because everybody around me, nobody has anything wrong unless maybe they're dying or they got a divorce. But while you're going through something, if more people could see that you walk by faith, that you're trusting the same God that, that we sing about right here. Now, you don't stand on a street corner and tell everybody, but you'll have your opportunity. You'll be saying, hey, just keep me in prayer. Man, just been battling some thoughts and just need some extra support. And, and you know, my wife and I, were doing this. Whatever, however you say it. But let people know that there is some kind of conflict that isn't caused by sin. That everything you're going through isn't caused because you did something wrong. You can get attacked because you do something right. 
Come on, you can get attacked because you're doing something right. I'm going to say it the third time. You can get attacked. Right? I mean, the devil's no dummy. He knows when people are given a coat of many colors. He's very aware of where favor is. He's long. He, he's aware of destiny on people's lives. He's a spiritual being. He don't go to church to get discernment classes. He's a spiritual entity. You know, he's been doing warfare a lot longer than any of us have here all put together. So it's very, very important that you understand that he's, he's got this inside track of he sees movement in the spiritual dimension. He, don't, he can't read your mind. He can't read what God's going to do with you, but he sees movement. He sees when the blessings are lining up. Like some of you have healing lined up and money lined up and a great marriage lined up. My God, you, if you only knew what was coming to your house, if you only knew. And see, and he sees this stuff all lining up, right? And, and he just says, I got to stop this. I can't let this guy get momentum. See, momentum is the edge. It, it, it's, it, believe it or not, it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like having three really good days in a row. Where he's under your feet. Come on, somebody. Three days in a row. Where you just take his loud mouth and say, come on, just get behind me. Just get behind me. And three days in a row where you just declare healing and it happens. Three days in a row where you can hear God. He says, don't take this road to work. Take that road to work. You know, don't give that wait, wait, waitress 20%. Give her 50%. Bless her socks off and then tell her about Jesus. Don't give her nothing and then tell her about Jesus. She'll never want to go to your church. Come on, say amen. But it's very, very important you understand that we are we're open epistles, read of all people. People are discerning on you anyhow. They're discerning on your happiness. They're discerning on what kind of marriage you have. They're discerning on how much money you make. That's what people do. People check people out. People are people watchers. That's why they go to the amusement park, not to ride the rides, but to watch people. Come on, they just watch people. And they say, how did he get with her? How did those two ever get together? <laughs> Come on, say amen. amen. <laughs> you know, and, and you just, you just kind of, because we're inquisitive. And then wonder what he does for a living. Well, he, boy, he acts like he's all that. Wonder what he does. You know, and, and it's interesting that we're inquisitive about people. If you see somebody in a wheelchair, wonder what happened to them. Oh, look at that poor lady. Look at that. Oh, look, look. She can hardly walk. Yeah, look at that. She, oh, there, how many people are helping her? We're very inquisitive. People are watching you. So you don't think they're watching you, but they are. Only they see different things. He goes to church all the time. <laughs> he's, he's part of that group down there. And they get down there, and I heard him making noise. They fall on the floor, and... And they do that gibberish language, gibberish. So that makes them judge us a little bit more harsher. Because they think, well, if they do all of that, then that's the result of it. I don't need that. We're here to make, we're here to make God glorified, but we're also here to make other people hungry for what we have. We're here to really be an appetizer. We can't be exactly what people need, but we, we're here to say, hey, you can have passion for the right thing. You can be a seeker for the right thing. You can give all of your life and give everything you have for the right thing. Everybody sells out. I said everybody sells out for something. You know, they all buy the T-shirt and, you know, and, 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 and the souvenirs and say that, I've, and they sell out to a, to a sport. They sell out to a company. They sell out to their culture. I've had more people sell out to just the fact that they were Italian. I thought, boy, if they would fight for Jesus like they do their Italian, I mean, my God, it's, it's amazing. You know, had a guy years ago come up, his name was Tony, and he, he had so many gold chains, he looked like Mr. T. He had just... <laughs> And, and he looked, he, if you, you would swear he'd be Sylvester Stallone. He looked just like him, you know. And he wore a muscle man's T-shirt to the meeting. And he had muscles. I mean, I guess that's what he wanted people to see, right? He wanted them to see 
not the T-shirt. He wanted them to see the muscles. And he came to the front, and I said, how can I help you? And he said, I'm going to get saved. <laughs> just like that, just like that. And I, and I said, well, hey, man, I thought, this is, this is great. And I looked around his neck, and I saw all these gold chains, and one had the Italian horn on it. Well, I, I, didn't, I wasn't trying to make anything big deal about the horn, but I just said to him, I said, so, uh, so this, this Italian horn here, there's people there watching this. I think it was right in New York City. There's people here watching this, and I said, so this Italian horn. I said, how are you going to get saved wearing an Italian horn? Now, you and I know that you can get saved wearing an Italian horn. And later I thought, why did I even say that? I leave every meeting saying, why did I say that? But you know what? You know what? You're surprised. Sometimes we say things we don't think we should say, but God is orchestrating your tongue. He really is. And I said, how are you going to get saved wearing that, that, that Italian horn? He said, I said, I want to get saved. I said, but you got the horn. And I'm thinking, and I'm, as I'm talking, I'm thinking, why are you doing this? He reached up with his hand, and his muscles were just boom right there, you know, boom right there. He he grabbed all those chains, and he broke them off his neck, right there, and he threw it on the ground. He said, "I said I want to get saved," you know. You know what I mean? And I thought, I thought, oh, I'm gonna hear him get him saved so we can be friends. Come on, somebody. But I mean, how pleased God is whenever there's a hindrance revealed. And you don't get offended. Oh. You know, it's the only reason that, that the Syrophoenician's woman who was, went there, her daughter was being vexed by a devil. She didn't go for herself. And she went to Jesus and she said, my daughter, well, she couldn't even get into the meeting because the disciples wouldn't let her in. And then they came to Jesus and said, this woman's bothering us. And so she kind of broke through the, 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 the guards at the door, the ushers. And she gets to Jesus. And he says, I'm not sent to you people. I'm only sent to Israel. And then she says, but hey, wait a minute. And then he says, well, you know, the healing is for the children's bread. And she said, but even, and he's, he called her a dog. He said, you know, da, da. and after this whole offended, 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 and she just kept methodically moving along. Her healing was based on the fact she took no offense. She took no offense. Today, people get offended so easily. Oh, my gosh. Over every little thing. Over every little thing, they get offended. And they voice it in so many different ways. One lady said to me, what do you think about these kids that have green hair? What do you think about these kids that have green hair and purple hair? I said, I think it colors, makes the place colorful. I knew what she wanted me to say. Those kids are going to hell in a handbasket. I'll tell you what, the, the, the devil. And, and I just wasn't going to buy into it because I don't think that. So I was tr trying to see where she was going. She said, it's a disgrace what's happening today. Purple hair, green hair. And she said, then you got the, the tattoos and the rings. They look like natives. They look like they're in the jungle. And I thought, ma'am, I said, do you, do you understand that God don't look at that? Oh, I know. You're probably going to preach the Bible to me. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> Evidently, you're not listening. <laughs> Evidently, I don't know why you go to church. You're not saved. You're not healed. You're not happy. What's going on here? You've got to extract fruit. You've got to extract meaning where you go. What's this all about? How can I be accessible to God? What can I walk away with? I need changes in my life that I can't afford. I don't have the power to make, and I don't have the person to help me get there. So how can, I get, how can I pick up the source and get attached to the resources to become a more whole person? That's who Jesus is. If he don't do it for you, then he'll connect you to it. He said in John 10, 9, I am the door. I'm the door. I'm the door to your recovery. Come to me for your healing. I may direct you to a nutritionist. I may direct you to a surgeon. I may direct you to a weight loss clinic. Come on, somebody help me with this one. 
<laughs> See, once you go through the door, once you quit looking to you and you quit looking to others, you begin to look to him as your only source. Come on, say, he's my only source. He's your only reliable source. He doesn't like it when you make something else your source. See, money is a resource. People are a resource. Knowledge is a resource. But God is your source. He'll use all of that, but he wants you to know when he gets upset and angry is whenever he sees you and I using any one of those resources as our source. Mm hmm it's really, really incredible that, and that happens to us. We begin to make people our source. That's why relationships burn out. Because you try and get too much from people that they don't have to give you. That's why marriages fail. You try and get more from her or from him than what they're able. That's why he said, I'm what, the marriage is a tricord. It's three people. It's you, you, your wife, and the master of it all. What they can't give you, he'll make up. Because when you put too much demand on somebody, they can't do that. It's not in anybody. Nobody can, nobody can fulfill you. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you've had a lot of dates. You've had a lot of friends. You know, you've kissed a lot of frogs. Come on, say amen. <laughs> and, and you get married to somebody, and then pretty soon when things aren't right, you're looking back and wondering if I'd have made it with her. Or what if he and I would have been married? And the bottom line is you're just not satisfied. Nothing can satisfy you. It's because there's a, there's a missing person at the table. Oh, you go to church. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about person. Not the church, the person. This person that comes into your life and really saves you from your genetic curses, no matter how far back they go. Saves you from yourself. That's the biggest one right there. Saves you from a devil's hell. I mean, he comes in. He's, I mean, he's busy with just one person. Imagine eight billion people. I think right now he probably has all the angels, and he's over in the Middle East just trying to fix everything over there. And he's working with us here while he's working with them there. That's why he is G-O-D. He's the only person that can be everywhere at once. That's why Lucifer ascended, because he, he, he couldn't be that. So he wanted the attributes. He was in charge of the earth, the mineral garden, where gold was in piles and silver was in piles. It was whenever he was kicked from heaven that when he hit the earth that the curse sent all of that stuff into the earth. It had to be mined out and worked out. That's what the curse does. See, the curse makes everything hard. Makes your job hard. Makes your marriage hard. It makes dreaming your dream hard. And you say to somebody, are you still dreaming? Am I dreaming? Right now I'm in a nightmare. Don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so all of a sudden your attitude goes south. Yeah, I went there, I got healed, nothing happened. Yeah, I mean, I, that I, I, he said I felt something. I, I kind of did, but maybe, you know, sometimes I feel something when I'm shaving. Come on, somebody. I mean... <laughs> And you really get this sarcasm, cynical, where the anointing is. God doesn't move and God doesn't change. He said, I'm the Lord thy God. I change not. It's we that move in and out. We choose in seasons to feel closer because we need them more. There's several people here tonight that really need a desperate touch. But if you keep walking in and treating these services like, well, here they are, another, another month and no more music and, you know, see some people get healed. You've got to really put this on your calendar and say, this is my D-Day. This is my day of deliverance. You've got to aim your prayers, get your expectancy moving. You know, begin to envision it. Begin to envision him touching you. Begin to envision your life outside of the wheelchair. You can't put too much weight on any preacher or any church to do all that for you. You know, I mean, you, you cultivating, you, you working and preparing before you even get to this meeting. Like tonight, you have the rest of tonight. You have all day tomorrow to get ready for tomorrow night. 
Yeah, get ready. I mean, would you rather eat a, a chicken? If your wife just brought a big chicken breast out of the freezer, you know, and just, it's frozen. And she just puts that on your plate and says, here, honey, we're having chicken tonight. And he'll say, I'll break my teeth on that chicken. Well, honey, but you like chicken. Well, I don't like it like this. I like it when you prepare it. Well, there's that word prepare. It's the same word for cultivate. When you get ready to receive healing into your body, what do you do when you cultivate? You value, put value. You put value on it. You don't come here and play bingo with God. He's going to call something out, and maybe he'll call mine out. And I'm going to go, he might call something out. If, if, if the preacher don't call it out, you call it out. Come on, you say, this is the night that miracles are going to happen. This is the night that my surgery is canceled. This is the night I wake up different tomorrow morning. This is the night the devil's power is broken. Come on, say, I've been delivered and the hold the devil had on me. He don't got no more. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, you got to really. But you, you got to at least put, you got to at least put your mind into cultivation mode. See, that's where you really win the war in healing. Because even if you come up here and you get the power and you get touched and you fall and, 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 and symptomatically things change, if you don't change your thinking with that, it's going to be a, it's going to be a short healing. Why does a dev, devil battle for our health? Because it's how you move around. I've determined a lot of people are, are really what a lot of people, a lot of Christians are mean. They're just mean. They, they're just, they just mean. And, I, and I've known that for years. I didn't tell anybody that. <laughs> they just mean. And especially if you see them outside of church, they're really mean. Come on, can you say amen? <laughs> and, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, but Billy, they don't mean to be mean. They don't feel good. They're on pain medication. They have arthritis. They have issues in their mind. Their kids are giving them a lot of hell. And, 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 and they come to church and they're just trying to find a, you know, a refuge and, you know, and, all, and all of a sudden they're being called out to, to get a miracle and they're just, they have a lot going on. And some of them are even, you know, they're, they're like full-time Ben Gay people. Full-time Ben Gay people. Not once in a while, full-time married to Ben Gay. Come on, can you say amen? <laughs> you know, and, and that blew me away. I said, Lord, don't tell me that's so. He said, sure it's so. Half the people in your meetings have knee braces, leg braces, back braces, ace bandages. If you smell them close enough, they're using perfume to cover up the Bengay. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I was in a restaurant in Tampa one night, and I was sitting at the table, and I thought, Lord, I just, I was so happy to be just there. You know, I was so weary from the road ministry and the trip, and I was glad to be out with my my wife, and we're sitting at a table, and I just said, I put my hands up in the rest. I said, Lord, thank you so much that I'm here. You brought me back safe, and I, I feel so strong. And I said, Lord, by the way, thank you for all these people here that are also able to be out here eating dinner. He said, don't be deceived by what you see. Most of these people had to take a pill to get out to dinner. They don't take a pill when they go home. And they've learned to live dysfunctional. That's their life. The pill to go to bed and the pill to get up. And it's 12 o'clock. It's time for my pill time. And now, I'm not condemning that. I want you to be out of pain. But what happened to us pressing in to the healer? You know, what, what happened to that? You know, what, what is it that makes us think that that cannot happen to us? I tell you it can I tell you, the greatest miracles that have ever been seen on planet Earth are on the way to the Earth. Amen. Come on, they are. They are. Come on, they are. 
I still think of that man back at the Canada College, that trooper who, who worked Young Street. You know, I, I don't know if it's still the longest street in the world. I was told it was at one time. But he was working Young Street, and he had been sliced in an attack with a knife. And they sliced him the whole way from up to his chest, the whole way down into his groin. It's just a long scar that he had. I didn't know this. I'm able to say it now. And, and I had never, in all my 45 years in doing this, I'd never had a word of knowledge about scars. I've just never had that word of knowledge until that night. I didn't know him. I didn't know the situation. And he's in the audience. And I said, there's, there's somebody here with a scar. And I thought, that seems so shallow whenever there's so many sick people here and par paralyzed people and cancer people. What are you concerned about a scar for? I, I have to admit, I haven't figured God out yet. I haven't. He's, you know, I love him. I know him. But I'd have to say there's a real mystery to him. We don't really know how he thinks completely. Anyhow, this trooper, he heard that word about the scar. And he just went, went to the bathroom in the back of the college. <clears throat> he said as he picked his shirt up to see the scar, he was watching the scar disappear in the mirror. Take that one back to your pastor. Come on, somebody. Come on. Take that one back to yourself the next morning. See, if you don't grab something when it's happening and believe it quickly, doubt can and usually does creep in. Maybe I didn't hear that right. Maybe he was embellishing that a little bit. Maybe Lazarus wasn't really dead. Maybe Bartimaeus was exaggerating about his blindness. It's amazing. It's amazing to that crowd out there how they want to dismiss everything that Jesus did. That's why it's so up to you. Because, see, we're in that culture more than we're in these meetings. We're here very briefly. I know our meetings here are once a month, you know, and, and we're so thrilled that we're coming into another year. Next month, I think we're here back at this auditorium. Then we shut down for the winter, I think, right? December. <laughs> he said it's a good time to go to Florida. Yeah, right here. But how easy it is to just give that little whispering, that talking snake, that talking snake that says, you, you'll, you won't die. You'll, just, you'll be just like God. That talking snake that says this isn't real. And that's why it's so important that you cultivate, that you work in your own heart. This, this stuff, this faith stuff, this Bible stuff, this Holy Ghost stuff, it defies logic. It doesn't make any sense. If you take the time to think about this making sense, you'll quit. You'll just quit. The songs we sing... Power, power, wonder working power in the blood. You think, what, what's that all about the blood? I mean, the song over here, I can't get no, na, 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 na. That makes more sense. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody talk to me tonight. Why does that pull the world into their flow, into their genre? Because it makes sense. This whole Bible is filled with stuff that just is wild. Water, with, you can make wine without grapes. Let, try that. <laughs> try making a cherry pie without cherries. Go home and try it. <laughs> just go make it all up and put the, 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 the no cherries and just stick it in the oven. And then say, honey, we're having cherry pie tonight. That's what Jesus did. And he wants us to believe that we can begin to think on that level. But it takes, it takes work. Everything out there is five senses. I have to see it or touch it or smell it. In here, it's like you can't see it. You've got to believe it before you see it. You've got to believe that the prayer you got did something. And it's going to show up tonight, tomorrow, next week. And you've got to keep nurturing it and, and dunging it and fertilizing it. Because that culture is working against 
everything that God has for you. See, that culture says you, you get to be a certain age, it's over. You just hang up your cleats, it's over. Turn the music off. You can't even hear the music anymore. Come on. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me here. They, they prepare you to die. They, pre- they, they prepare you to be helpless and hopeless and to be dependent on government. Come to us for your medicine. Come to us for everything you need. Come to us, come to us, come to us. Jesus said, come unto me. It's a big mental transition that takes, that takes thought outside of these meetings. And I, I'm writing in my book, it'll be out, I think, by the spring, but the biggest discovery that I've had was way back in the 70s, and I was so hungry for God, I was pursuing him, and, and I didn't know how to pursue him. Because I was craving that same presence that I grew up in. I grew up in the Catherine Kuhlman ministry where you'd be on the same block as the church was. And by the time you hit the block where the building was that she was in, when you would hit the block, you would just feel the presence just coming all over that block. People would pack out the streets and down. It would shut Pittsburgh down. I was in a little crowd. I was a little kid with a grandmother in a big crowd on 6th Avenue. And people just craving to get near this presence that was emanating from that. So I, I grew up with that. So when you grow up with something, you want that. But, but she never really told me how to get it. And that wasn't her job to do that. Her job was to live it and exude it. And it's the other people's job to get hungry for it and to begin to seek him. But here's what I found out that was amazing to me. I went after knowledge. I, re- I began to read the Bible so much. I was after knowledge. But I ran into presence. Oh. You know what I mean. I, I wasn't trying to find presence. I was trying to find knowledge. I wanted to learn about Jesus. But the more that I read, the more presence that I felt. And then it moved into the more pictures that I began to see. I just didn't see Peter getting out of the boat. I just didn't read it and know it. I began to see him doing it. I just didn't read about him touching a leper. I began to see him doing it. That's what purged you from pornography, from fear. That's what will that scrub your mind of everything, of every bad memory you've ever had. It's when the video gallery changes. Come on, say, I have a video gallery. Come on. Come on, say, a distinct memory. Photographic wise. See, and, and, and any good doctor is going to tell you they're there for life. Deal with it. Go get the priest to absolve you. You know, go get the pastor to do confession with you, but learn to live with it. That's not what the cross is about. That's, right. That's not what the cross is about. The cross isn't about anything other than removal. Yeah. Now you see it, now you don't. It's on an x-ray, it's gone. It's in your memory, it's, a, it's dissolved. That's, that's, but see, you have to begin to really absorb that more than just when you're in a meeting. You know the old, the old saying, she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. That whole thing is about saying it enough times that you believe it, that she loves you. Repetition is a secret to... All the rehearsal that we do is a secret to our own reality. This is just a public meeting where we try and hit you with something that's going to give you the hope that something can be better, can be different. That you don't have to die of cancer. You don't have to have Alzheimer's. Well, I'm glad I wish I had met you years ago because my mother had it and her mother had it. Well, then you're going to be the one that stops the curse. Somebody has to stop the curse. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Yeah, but I don't know, but I don't know. See, there's that I don't know. There's that I don't know in you. That's what has to be destroyed. Come on, this I know, that all things work together for those that love the Lord who stay in his purpose. Paul didn't say, I believe. He said, I know. What's better than believing? Knowing. Knowing is always better than believing. Believing means you have to have faith to believe it. 
Knowing says, I already, I already know it. And I trust it. But you've got to tell yourself that. See, if you don't encourage yourself, I mean, you better, you better not be waiting on other people to encourage you. That's why the woman started talking to herself. When I touch the hem. When I touch the hem. Who's she talking to there? Who's she talking to? wonder why she's talking to herself because there's nobody there to talk to her. You're going to find out in your life there's not a lot of people there to talk to you about the right thing. They're there to talk to you about soccer or hockey or football or the fashion show. There's all kind of people. They're always talking to you. But when's the last person to talk to you? Talked about you getting out of that wheelchair. Getting rid of that medication. Being so wonderfully healed that you don't need those glasses any longer. Not that they're bad. Nobody says they're bad. But I don't think you were born with them. I mean, oh, come on, so what's the matter with this one? <laughs> but see, I don't want to have to offend you to, get, to tell you the truth. Because we all can get lazy in our faith here. Because why? We let the preacher do everything. Or the choir. You know, or the praise and worship team. God's wanting your faith to get volcanic. He's wanting you to get everything the covenant promises you that you can have. That he paid a price. What? His blood, what his blood is what really what washed away your sins. But his stripes is what washed away your healing or your disease. But you can be healed of everything you're suffering with tonight. I'm here to tell you that. You can be healed of every single thing that you're suffering with tonight. Amen. Yes. But you got to, you got to, you, if, if nobody's encouraging you the right way, people are always going to encourage you. Oh, what well, you got that hairdo. Where did you get that? It, you looks, that's just you. That is just you. the dress you have on. That is you. Where'd you get that makeup? Where'd that makeup? Hey, I can tell you how to get these scratches out of your car. We all get encouraged. Hey, you want to go to a Toronto Blue Jay game? I, I can tell you where I can get tickets. Man, I'll take your son down there to the game. Hey, you got to get down to the market down there. They're having, what, three watermelons for one price. Come on, somebody help me. <laughs> we're good about, we're really good about that. But who comes along in your life and says, hey, hey. God's telling me that you're not going to have any more sleepless nights. That you're going to sleep deep. You're going to wake up refreshed. That you're going to live out your days. That you're not going to die before your time. And you're not going to go by way of the grave that you've been thinking about. People begin to fantasize their own death. Well, how, how am I going to go? How about how you're going to live? Amen. Dying's easy. It's living that's hard. That's why Paul said, I don't know whether I should stay or go. It's more needful that I stay. I'd like to go, but it's more needful for you that I stay. Imagine he had the power to release his spirit or the power to retain his spirit. He said, I, I, I want to, believe me, I, once you see that, you want to go. And I, and I want to go, but... It's more needful that I stay for you all. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I really believe we're on the verge of some, some events on our planet that's going to remind us all that the great catching away is very, very near. Come on, give God a big shout here tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. But it would be great to be, it'd be great in the meantime we're to occupy. I don't want to get caught up, is that the Ezekiel war over there? Is this, you know, is this this, is this that? I mean, everybody, it's great if it is great. But in the meantime, Billy Burke is called to occupy his space. You know, I'm, I'm called to be responsible for what I know, what I have. You know, for the healings that I need, for the strength that I need. It's very, very important that, that, and that you pull on that. I don't care who you are, how anointed you are, how famous you are, how much money you have or don't have. He sees you as his beloved. He hears every whisper, every word. 
He hears every cry that you have to make. And he wants to hear it. I mean, you can come in here all night and get excited and hot and shababa yanda and run around the room and, and have a great night and get holy laughter and not come an inch closer to your miracle. It can be actually a greater distraction. And sometimes people just do things to get their mind off of something. I don't teach do stuff to get your mind off of something. I teach get your mind onto something. Don't get your mind off of something. Get your mind on a promise. Get your mind on a Bible story. Get your mind on a friend that you know. You all have friends that have some remarkable stories. Get your mind on that testimony you heard on the 700 Club. Or that testimony you heard in your church that a couple years ago. And get your mind on something that feeds you. You put your mind onto it. It's not what you get your mind off of. You put your mind onto something. When you put your mind on the right thing, it scares away all the wrong things. Come on, give God a big praise. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on, give him a shout. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty praise. But, but tonight and tomorrow night, I want, you to, I want you to receive. I don't want you just to wait on skin touching your skin. I want you to really realize, what, what are you battling? What are you here for? Well, I'm not here. I mean, I'm okay. I'm doing great and all that. Well, then what are you here for? Well, I just want a refresher. That's great. Then just say, God, I need a refreshing. But there's people that are battling things in meetings like this that it's really, really important that you lay it out there not for anybody else to hear, but so you are talking to yourself. Like the woman said, when I touch that, I got to touch that hem. The four lepers said, why we sit here till we die? They're talking to a very small group of people. They're, they're trying to push a boundary of impossibility. They feel stuck that they were going to die lepers in that one spot. And they said, what are we just sitting here for, waiting to die? What are we sitting here waiting for just to die? If the Blue Jays win the World Series, that gives you a little bump for the whole year. Come on, somebody. You you don't even realize you got the hat and talking about the Blue Jays all year. That sustains you. And that's what we do is we get sustained. But we don't get sustained to just be sustained. We get a break in the action. We get a break so that we can look up and begin to believe. Come on. That all those lumps are going to disappear. That that hernia is going to disappear. That your cancer is going to disappear. Yeah, but I've been back. I'm on dialysis now. I go three times a week. for. And I said to one lady, I said, so how long have you been going? She said, three years. And I go three times a week. And she said, Billy, I'm just exhausted. I've been to your meetings, Billy Burke. And 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 God bless you. You're doing the best you can. But she said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I said, "You, you quit believing. You lost your expectancy. You still go to church. You still get prayers, but you you quit expecting anything. I said, that's not, it's easy to lose. Discouragement is not that far away from all of us. I said, you got to find that axe head again that sank in the river. You got to go find that again so you can believe again. Come on, say believe again. Believe again again that something is going to happen in your situation. Well, why did God, why did God wait so long? I don't have that answer. Maybe he wants some people in your family to see that it's never too late. Maybe he, some people in your church need to become believers, you know, after all. Your, your story is always to impact somebody. Yeah, I mean, when I was getting healed at Catherine Coleman's, I mean, the people in our church that only believed in miracles in the creed, but they didn't allow anything demonstrated in the church. So my grandmother told them that she was taking me down to a Catherine Kuhlman service. These people in our church about flipped. They about flipped out. Oh, my God. She's a witch. Oh, my God. Don't take him there. He'll die for sure, you know. I mean, I didn't know she went through all that. God bless my grandmother for going through all that and my grandfather. And they said, no, no, we really believe that God's using that woman. Oh, I can't believe you would believe that. Did you talk to the pastor about that? 
And my grandma says, no, I don't need to talk to the pastor. I talked to God. He said, take him to the meeting. <laughs> you know, so. Okay. So it's, it's very, very important that, that you come up with who are you listening to. There's, there's my grandmother had to fight against church, church people. Church people, not people at Joe's Bar, not those people, not people at the strip club or the casinos. She had to fight against church people. <laughs> so we went, and I came out of there and healed of cancer in 30 seconds, or I felt like 30 seconds, it was pretty longer than that. But, and my grandma says, we're taking you back to church. Yeah. And I said, boy, you seem excited to take me back to church. She said, I'm very excited to take you back to church. And I'll never forget that Sunday we walked into that church, you know, and all the Christians, you know, the believers. <laughs> well, hi, Billy. So glad you made it. Yeah, I can count on your prayers, I'm sure. Everybody's not going to travel with you. And you're going to find yourself like the woman with the issue. You're going to find yourself having to talk to you. You got to talk to you. When you find that rare person who says, hey, man, I'm believing with you. My faith is with you. Those are people that are they're trophies. They've been thinking about you. I've been saying some extra prayers for you. And I just believe you're, God's going to come through for you. Uh, trophies. But most people think about themselves. We get it. What's that mean? You're going to have to be talking to yourself. I mean, I'm going to be getting me. You got to talk to yourself. Like, how would you talk to yourself? What would you ever say about your children? Boy, if I could just get my hands on him. Come on, somebody, right? <laughs> if, if you could, you need to talk to you about really the hope that you say you believe. Then when you come to a meeting like this, you're just prepared even at a higher level to receive. Some lady said to me, why is it taking God so long? I said, ma'am, why do you think it's taking God so long? She said, well, I just think I got some bigger stuff I'm fighting. I said, boy, you're talking to yourself. I said, you're absolutely right. If you take a step back, you know, you know the answers to all of your questions. <laughs> and it's important that you, that you begin to believe that it isn't too late. We could have come out, we could have been praying for people by now. We could be halfway done. I just decided to keep you really late tonight. <laughs> no, I didn't do it. I decided to talk to you. I'm talking. I'm not preaching. I'm talking to you. Because I want to reason with your thinking. Because it doesn't do you and I any good to come together every month and just to keep repeating something that isn't manifesting for you. So, so who's not going to change here? God's not going to change. I can only give you what I have. I can't come here and be different every month. You'd think I was crazy. There has to be some changes you have to make. You have to want your miracle more than I want it. More than the musicians want it. You have to want to see, hear, smell, talk, sleep all night, cancer free. We just had a miracle in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Millennial Church. A good friend of mine pastors that. And this girl was there who was mentally ill. I mean, she was schizophrenic at a very, very high level. I didn't know that. And I heard some noise coming from the center of the auditorium. I didn't know who or what that was. Evidently, the leadership there knew about her and knew that she manifested quite often. So they didn't take it serious. And so they didn't know the difference between God falling on her and her manifesting devils. So they were just like, just that's her. Yeah, that's Legion. He's always screaming. <clears throat> yeah, that's her. He's, she's always in the wheelchair. Yeah, that lady that comes to church, you know what I mean, that one always wears a neck brace, you know. 
So we define people by their handicap. We define people by the way they walk, the way they look. So here's this girl in the middle of this huge church was mentally ill. I didn't know her. I had no idea who she was. And I was just walking through the audience, and I said, there's somebody here. I said, you're struggling with voices in your head. These are voices that are talking to you all the time. And I said, I don't know who you, and I didn't even get to finish my sentence. And I mean, she just, those devils just begin to come out of her. Well, the people in the church, I'm thinking, why aren't these people excited? Well, they were just thinking, that's, Billy Burke don't understand, that's who she is. No, what they didn't understand, that God snuck into their church and was doing a miracle. You got to give people notice. Say, I'm about to change any day now, so get ready. Don't get used to me the way that I am. I'm better looking than I look. I'm smarter than who I am. I have a better IQ. I'm more talented. I mean, get ready. I mean, there's a new me about to emerge. Come on, somebody. Well, so as the story goes, as the story goes, she was, as I get closer to where she was, I was trying to find out where she was. As I located her in the auditorium, I thought, whoa. I said, uh, I walked over near, and I thought, this girl's really under the anointing. Well, meanwhile, the people were thinking, this girl's just being that girl. So I'm not even on the same page as the rest of the church. They're not, they're, they're not going to prayer for, hey, let go, go, go. They're thinking, uh, he found out so-and-so. He, he got a hold of Barbie, you know. And I went and I said, hey, you okay? And she just flipped out. Right there in front of me. And I just had to deal with it. You can't heal a demon. You've got to call it out. You can't heal demons. You can't cast out the flesh. You know, I mean, deliverance is a very real part of, of all of our journey. We all get hit with stuff along the way. Anyhow, I just looked at it. It was real soft. I wasn't demonstrative. I said, loosen her. Well, these things just, I could feel them leave. And people just went, Oh my, these are full gospel people though. Not Joe's Bar, not the strip club. Come on, these are, these, these are people that are supposed to be well versed in this. You know, I mean, that's, that's what we're here for because we believe a little deeper. We do deeper dives. We believe in the demons and the angels. And we believe that you can have visions and dreams. And, and we believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And we believe that God can speak to any one of you in an amazing way. And so while this is all going on, I'm thinking, I feel like I'm among strangers. Not full gospel people. It was a weird, lonely feeling. And they were looking at me like, why are you letting her go on like that? Well, finally, she let out a, watch this. I mean, right in front of everybody, she just changed. And she began to be normal. And I was like, yes. And I, and, and I was so happy because I knew if I'm seeing that, these other Christians had to see this too. <laughs> These other full gospel people had to see this. And, 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 I, and they, they went, whoa. And she stood up and she began to say, here's what she said. Something to this, I'm paraphrasing. She said, I, I feel normal. You know, now watch this, now watch this. And I'm thinking, and I just stood back. I just, just like that, stood back. I said, go get them, girl. Go get them. Tell the whole church. Half these people probably need delivered themselves. Tell the whole church. <laughs> and she began to talk in a language like, I just can't believe it. I just, I feel my hands. And, and I see you. And you're, you're wonderful people. And, and I just feel normal. And she looked at me. She said, I didn't know what to say. She said, I just feel normal. I said, well, tell us what that means. She said, I don't know what it means. I just feel like I'm here. She was saying all of the, the telltale words that revealed she got free. Wow. Right in front of the people that were going to let her be that way. Yeah. You need to tell people in your church and when you go, say, hey, don't let me hold you back. Don't let me hold you back. If you want to go walking and leaping or if you want to scream, you get free. You, you get, you've come into full recovery, whatever you have to do. But this was a situation here where the anointing fell on this lady, and she recognized it and went with it. 
See, if you're programmed the wrong way, it could fall right on you tonight, and you go, oh, I can't do that here tonight. No, this is Peter and Paul's place. Come on, somebody. Peter and Paul. If Peter was here, he'd say go for it. If Paul was here, add Mary, and Peter, Paul, and Mary. Come on, they would all go for it. Come on, somebody give God a shout in this place. Come on, give him a mighty shout. You know, when we line up the people and when we do that over at the other place at the event center, the Crown Hall, and people get around the room, we did that at the college too. And we've seen people healed in that setting, but sometimes it's just line up and just, you know, are you believing? Are you waiting for a touch, but you're not adding your faith to it? You have to add your faith to it. So if I'm going around the room, you should be over here saying, I don't know, when he touches me, I'm, I'm, this is it. Hurry and, get, hurry and get over here. Not touch me so I can fall. Touch me so I can really, if you fall, great. That's even greater. But I mean, the idea is that, man, I'll tell you what, this is my night for no more headaches. This is my night for no more sinus issues. The fall season's coming, and that means sinus. That means cold weather. That means my bones begin to hurt. I'm tired of these bones hurting. I'm tired of my bones hurting. These bones are not going. Bone, he comes over, I'm going to get my bones strengthened. And you begin to really get your faith way more involved than just waiting. You begin to, you begin to be a partaker. You begin to get radical with the covenant of healing. Because you don't want to grow old with what you have now. You say, but I'm already old. You don't want to stay old with what you have now. <laughs> you don't want to grow old with it or stay old with it. Because you know what? It can always get worse. There may be a day whenever the medication don't have the impact. There may be a day when Ben Gay isn't so gay anymore. <laughs> I mean that happy gay. I don't mean the bad gay. You know, stuff like that does run its course. I used to be able just to put that brace on, and then it was just to go away. Now it's like it, it doesn't work. Here's what works. The power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It works. It works. It works. You know, we had a guy, in, where was it, in Butler, Pennsylvania, and he had a bone that was protruding out of his chest, over here on his breastbone. It was actually protruding. It had broken through the skin, and it was just gross looking. And then he was sitting there, and his wife had come to me, and she said, if you get time, could you come over here and spend some time with my husband? I said, man, do you see all these people here? I don't have time to spend a lot of time. I'll get over there and pray for him. I said, just tell him to get ready. What should I tell him? Tell him when I touch his chest, the bone's going to go in. That's how I told the wife. See, sometimes wives can make their husbands listen. Come on, say amen. <laughs> I said, you go tell your husband, I'm going to get over there and touch that bone. It's going to go back into his chest. She said, I will do that. And so she went over. I just trusted she was going to do that. I don't know who's going to tell, who's going to do what. So I went about my business, praying for people in the, and that was a, big ballroom of a, of a hotel and I went around here and here she's waiting and she's, she's going like this so I meandered away my over and I, I saw the bone I saw the chest there and I, went, I, didn't even, I turned my head I didn't want to look at it I turned my head and I just went like this and ladies and gentlemen I'm going to tell you something I felt that bone go right back into his chest yeah. I mean I, I, get, I get impressed with God I don't want to say shock because that may not sound right to you, but none of us can get beyond being overwhelmed with what he's able to do. I walked away. Watch this. I pushed that in. I felt the bone moving. I thought, what? And God said, well, you said it with your own mouth. Practice believing what you say. Practice believing what you're singing. How great thou art. Practice that. He touched me. Oh, eat. oh! I didn't ask you to sing this song. Come on. <laughs> but practice that. And I walked away, and I could hear her screaming, my God. And it caused a ruckus over on that side of the, of the ballroom. And I turned around to look, and this lady was thinking, she was just like, like she won the lottery. 
I didn't go after her money. I didn't try and get her and signed up for some program. I just went, man, praise God. I said, man, just love them, serve them. Tell people about this. How could you not? That's the one thing I'll tell people everywhere that I go. Make a deal. Sign a covenant with God. Touch me. Heal me. I'll tell everybody. I'll hold back nothing. I'll not be ashamed. I'll let them know every detail. If it took a year, if I had to go through treatments. But it was that power of the prayer that sustained me. It was that prophetic word that kept me. It was that touch that I fell on the floor at Peter and Paul. Or at the crowns. Or at the cell and outreach. And oh my God, it's just, it's just amazing. This lady at the cell and outreach, I mean, she came from far. She had stage four cancer. She was dying. And she didn't know that on some days at the, at, when we do these meetings, we have a morning teaching. We do, usually do two healing meetings and a morning teaching. But she came on the day of a morning teaching. But she, she tried to come on. She thought it was every meeting was a healing meeting. So when she came into the, into the meeting, as I was told, she said, when does the healing service start? And they said, well, it's not a healing service today. He's still teaching today. And she said, what? I came all this way for a teaching? And they said, well, ma'am, it's a teaching today. And they said, can you come back? And, and so she went over and sat down. She fell asleep while I was teaching. <laughs> she woke up healed. <laughs> she woke up healed. What's the matter with this church tonight? Come on. Just the power of the written word that was being declared. And she's sleeping in that written word, and it's going in her. I think probably she had to sleep so God could get the word in her. Because we resist it sometimes when we hear it. Back away from sometimes what you're holding on to. Maybe what you believe isn't accurate. Maybe there's something that's blocking the blessing. And maybe that God wants you before you get too much older to beat whatever's been having you all these years. Victory has no substitutes. Come on, say victory has no substitutes. More than preaching to your children, more than scaring your children about church and the end times, victory. Getting that ear open tells your children, wow. Getting off that medication, getting off that vaporizer. Sending that hospital bed back to the hospital. Come on, somebody help me. Come on, somebody help me tonight. Put your hands up all over the place, all over the place tonight. I, I, I just feel something good here tonight and tomorrow night is going to be amazing. I, I believe there's miracles taking place right now. I really do. I really do. I, I just want you to really do your best to press in tonight. You know, he's the God of the next time. He is the God. Say, my God is the God of the next time. Meaning the last time it didn't manifest. The last year it didn't manifest. But he's the God of the next time. You just don't know when that yoke's going to break. You just don't know when that pain leaves for the last time. You just don't know when that, those eyes open up. Floaters are gone. Macular degeneration is gone. My God, you can see like you did when you were in high school. It, you just don't know. That's why we keep pressing in. That's why we don't quit. That's why we have to bypass all of the people that are sneering and jeering. And some of them are your fellow brothers and sisters. And sometimes you just got to go past all those naysayers and just declare, I still believe in miracles. Come on, I still believe in the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit. I still love the anointing. I love to bask in the glory. God's about to do something. He's about to break into my life and set me free. Tonight is the beginning of a new level of freedom. Come on, can you give God a big shout here tonight? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on, give him one more. (laughs) 
Oh, my. Amen. Amen. Mm. I know Pastor Dave is coming. We're going to receive our offering here tonight. He's going to come and tell you about how to do all that offering. Listen to me, you know. We, don't, we have no cover charges. We don't do any fundraisers. I think once a year we have a banquet. and so You're so good, all of you. Um, but we do know that there's people that, that come and don't give. We would ask you to support this mission. It's called Touching Toronto. Come on, say it. Touching, touching Toronto. Toronto. We want next year to be Touching Toronto and beyond. Yeah. We, we got we to hit this Canada nation quickly. Yes. Your government needs help. Come on, your government... <laughs> Our government needs help. I mean, so we really need some, some miracle invasion here. Pastor David's coming, and then we're coming back. We're going to pray for you tonight. Pastor David? All right, folks. If you do not have an offering envelope tonight, just put your hand up real high. The ushers will come back and give it to you. Most of you should have one, but if you don't, put your hand up high and just wave it till the ushers get there with the offering envelopes. <laughs> Make your checks payable to SOC for That's Selwyn so Outreach good. Center. It's up on the overhead projector screen here. Checks payable to SOC. Okay. Please, again, print nice and clean and How's clear for, all the information long on long. your check. Uh, if you want to give me. using debit card, then uh, go to the back. Cheryl will be at the back table there in the lobby. And you can uh, donate using your debit card. If you're using credit card, just fill it in the information on the envelope. Again, print really clear. Want to make sure you get a, a tax receipt at the end of the year. And so fill in all the digits, the uh, expiry date, the, all that kind of thing on the envelope. Again, print real clear. And for those that uh, are wanting to uh, donate again through the debit machine, debit card, just go back there. And I think I've covered most of it. Everyone got an envelope back there? Again, checks payable to SC. Credit cards printed in clearly. Debit cards go to the back. If you got all that, just remain seated while we take up the offering. And then uh, Duncan's going to lead us and the ushers uh, wait for my cue to take up the offering. But remain seated as we take up the offering tonight. Go ahead, Duncan. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. So break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Ushers, go ahead, pick up the offering. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. So break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name is Well, hello, folks. 
We're just jumping in. He's gonna count you down. Going. Pastor Dave, just jumping in here for a moment. Just wanted to let you know that we are glad you're watching this live stream. And we're saying, Pastor Billy's already said it tonight. Expect, expect your miracle. Believe and expect tonight. And I just jumped in here for a moment just to thank you for being supportive. And by the way, you want to give online, you can go to touchingtoronto.com, click on the donate tab and give anytime, security online. But we thank you for your prayer support. We thank you for being a part of this evening, the service tonight. And we thank you for the, the abundance that God is bringing into the house. Again, expect your miracle tonight as we go back into the service. God bless you. And we will see you once again at another time.
Take it up, Doc. Hallelujah. discs, this herniation in the back, herniated disc, he's healing that right now, come quickly. Come up to the front, the left and right side of the wall, the come right herniation. up to the front, Who is left and right with? side. Who is this, quickly, come to me, where, 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 come. Big guy's coming down there, come on big guy. How long you had this man? Pardon me? How long you had this this uh, 25 years. How long? 25 years. Did you hurt yourself? No. No. How so did it happen? I was just explaining that to my dad. That they, I don't know why. Your dad had it? No, no. I was explaining yesterday to my dad that it's weird that I have it because I haven't been injured. I haven't been in an accident. I haven't been in a ski. Where is it hurting at tonight? My spine. Is it hurting yeah. now? Yeah, a little bit. We'll check it. I was, well, I was, I was healed two weeks ago, but it's still not completely done. God, that was on that man. Come on, give God a shout. Give God a shout. See, what he said you don't pay attention to. Don't ever be ashamed that you have to get another touch. He said, I was healed two weeks ago, meaning manifested. It manifested. But that's kind of creeping back. Well, at some point, you got to open up that good book. Come on, say, how many know what the good book is? Come on. Amen. Somebody say, what translation? Whichever one you'll believe. <laughs> if you believe the living, read the living. If you believe the New American Standard, you know, the Passion Trans, whatever. They all work. <laughs> People ask you what translation. Then you know they don't want to read any of them. That's why they ask that question. This gentleman right here got touched quickly. Did you see that? He's an usher. I didn't know he was an usher. <laughs> huh? He's part of the team. Let's bring him up. I didn't know he was an usher. Well, the power just hit this man. Check it now, sir. What? Huh? 
Praise you. God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God a Thank shout. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Woo! Praise you, God. Thank you. You know, he ran up here. That's how you do it. You slide down the pole. You run. This man on the walker right here. This is herniation disc. That's why you're on this walker. The back. That he had arthritis. Then he fell on the ladder. So then he hurt his knee. Now he can he just can can control himself. So where's your pain the most, sir? Where's your pain the most? Is it hurting now? Yeah. Are you sure? Still pain. You feel it? Oh, the power's right there, sir. It's all over you. Look at the power on the man. I haven't even touched the man, and the power's on him. Yeah, but this leg's not. Now he wants his knee healed too. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Holy Ghost on both, on both, on both, on both. Come on, somebody better give God the shout. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day. Get him up, get him up. This is my story. This is my song. Check it. Checking my savior all the day long. What? Come here. Come here, man. It's better? How much better? Fifty. Fifty percent. Yeah, the shoulders too. Not the shoulders. Yeah, I know. The whole body is good. But the back's the bottom's okay. The back. The bottom's okay, so we're going to go up to the top. Stay right here, sir. Don't go away. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior. I and my Savior. Happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. We need replacement a month ago. How's it feel right now? I feel good. It feels good? The thing is... I don't feel the side of my knee, by my knee. I this is my, this is my story. This is my song. Praising, praising my Savior all the day long. long. This is my story. story. This is my song. Give me that lady right there. Praising, praising my Savior. This is my story. Oh, the Holy Ghost. This is my song. Herniated disc. All the day. This is my story. L4, L5. Huh? L4, L5 herniated. L4, now how long have you had this? Uh, like 10 years, but I had back surgery and it's getting better and better. And There's it a Lyme's disease. Somebody being healed of a Lyme's disease here tonight. Limes, you're in the room. There's a Crohn's disease in the room. There's heart calcification. Some of the valves in your heart are calcified. That's horrible. You're being wonderfully healed. God's going to remove all the calcification. You won't have to have open heart surgery. God's going to do it to you tonight. What's going on here, you lady? Lyme disease. Lyme disease. How Lyme. long have you had the limes? 11, 12 years. 11 or 12 years she's had it. She's not going to have it any longer. She's not going to have it any longer. Come on, somebody. This is my song. This is my song. Come on, praise it. All the day. This is. This is my story. This is. You are the God that he loved me. You are the Lord, my, my healer. Oh, the power here. You sent, you sent your word and healed my disease. disease. You, you are the Lord, my healer. Come on, everybody, as loud as you can. You are the God. You are the God. You are, you are the Lord, my healer. You 
sent your word. You sent your word and, and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Lyme's disease? Right here? Yes. Right here? Right. How long, ma'am, have you had this? I don't know. Could have been from the 90s. Painful? I don't think so. It's not painful for you? No. But I was given that I have it in my system with all the co-infections, tons of them. Tons of them. Tell the people what kind of infections you have. Well, there's all kinds of other bacteria and mitochondria that get into your system when you get lit, bit by a Lyme tick. Borrelia. Borrelia burgdorferi yeah. is just one part of it. Someone here scheduled for hip replacement surgery. You're, 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 you're a candidate for hip replacement surgery. And you're going to get it tonight, right here. You're going to get it tonight. Where are you? Come on, where are you with this hip replacement? Where's this lady with their man or lady, whoever it is with the... Well, my father in Hungary. I'll pray for your father in Hungary, but there's someone in the building on this parlay floor right here. There's... Where, 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 where? You. Okay. Both of you stand right there. Get the woman next... Your hut, your... Who's your where's he at? In Hungary. Yes. Can you call him on the phone? Yeah, he's, it's like six hours ahead. so he. I don't care how many yeah, hours. Sure, can I you can call try. him on the phone? <laughs> Do you get want him out to... of bed. Sure. Let me get my phone. Get a phone. Dear God, that's why we got phones. Come on, we're, 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 we're going beyond Toronto tonight. Amen. We're going beyond Toronto tonight. Hurry, lady. I don't got all night. Come on. Come on. Is it, is it ringing? What's your... Huh? I'm going what's, your, what's wrong with your father now? He, he's, he needs hip replacement His surgery. Hip. I just hope his phone is not on silent. It's ringing. Well, at least you tried. You, you tried. We got to get you moving towards direction. Trying. Contending for your faith. Contending for your miracle. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much Bible you know, how many pastors you know, how long you've been in church, how long you've talked in tongues. you got to contend for I the faith. People worry full time. They're in fear full time. Why can't we be in faith full time? Come on. What was this, David? Limes? What was this, Limes? Yeah, man, man, he's, he's taken out all those... All those entries, all those portals of entry. Anything in you is dying. Anything in you causing infection is dying. And Master, we give you praise for this father in Hungary. And hungry for this. Oh, my, the power's on this lady right here. Lord, we thank you. And we thank you for this. Oh, the Holy Ghost on this man. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Who's this? has dementia. It's your husband, you say? Yes. Uh huh. But he also, like me, has this diagnosis of Lyme disease. And I have no idea how Glad long you're here, Sam. It's been Glad you're here. System. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Touch the wife. Touch the wife. Touch the wife. Oh, the power's on that woman. Touch Sam. Touch Sam. Touch Sam. Touch Sam. Touch Sam. We give him praise. Touch Sam. Touch the lady. Come on. Somebody help the. What's wrong with the heart, ma'am? Two heart. leaky valves. Two leaky valves and arrhythmia. Have they have they said anything about calcification in the heart at all? Have they said anything. They tried about operating on one of the leaky valves, but it still leaks. Oh, the power, the power, the poor oh, lady, the power. Woo. We just give you praise, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you, dear Jesus. We thank you, dear Jesus. Lengthen her days. Full faculties, all the days of your life. As your days, so shall your strength be. Come on, give the master a big God bless you. Come on. Yes. Hip so what's hip going on here, ma'am? Hip replacement for my sister. Fibromyalgia being my wonderfully sister. healed. Fibromyalgia. Osteoarthritis being wonderfully touched. Quickly. Hurry, lady. Don't talk about it. Get up here. Get that fur coat up here. My God, come on. Get the hood and the... We don't like to see the fur coats yet, right? Anna, osteoarthritis. By that Holy Ghost. Amen. Give God a shout. By that Holy Ghost. I need a worker right here. By the Holy Ghost. 
Lord, my Bless healer. You are, our greatest. you are the God. Come on. You are the God. That, that healeth me. Power, man. You are Power. the Lord. My, my healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. And healed my disease. You are the Lord. My healer. You are the God. Back here, guys. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Come on, you are the God. You are the God. Yes. That healeth me. You I are the Lord, Lord, my healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. Listen to me. This, this spirit is sweeping over this whole place. As soon as you sense something's changed, I want you up here to tell me. You don't need me to touch you. You don't need me to touch you. He's in this room. He's in this room. Some of your eyes are clearing up. Some of you are hearing better. If you put your hand in your blouse, that lump is gone. I want to know about it soon as it happens. Get up here. You get up here. As soon as you feel that thing broke, you get up here. Lady in the green, what happened? What happened to you? You what? You feel light. It's husband. What's going on here? What happened? What happened? Something left, yes. Something left me. I'm believing for the manifestation of the healing of my Some, eyes. Come here, sir. Come here. Come here. Come here. Something left. We want something to come in and stay. How, is your vision better? Uh, I, I, it still uh, seems a little blur, blurry. Well, let's get rid of the blurry stuff. Oh, that power. Push it. Push it. Just a minute. What's that? And, and that stuff almost killed me. I cracked myself down and I was going to come up for three or four months, but now I want to be healed. I want to be walking more with God and less with this filthy world. Please, God, heal me, please, please. So what happened to you? What happened to you? I had a bad biking accident when I was 16. I was three or four months on a coma. But since that day, God has been so good to me. God blesses me always. Where do you hurt? I, I, oh, 
my head on my left, I have a hole here on my left part of my brain. I have that power's hole. coming on you. I said that power's coming on you. Come on, somebody. I said the Holy Ghost is on that man. Woo! Wow. Get him up, my God, he got a miracle. Come on, somebody got to get happy here. Get him up. What happened? I want to be healed. I want to be working with God more or less. If this. Are you better? I am better. God heal me. Amen and amen. I believe it and I receive it. Amen and amen. Whoa. Oh, heal my miracle. Heal my miracle. Amen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you feel better. I feel God heal me, God renew me, God strengthen me so I can preach His word to all of the nations. Amen and amen. Amen. I believe it and I receive it. Amen. What's the matter with this crowd tonight? What's the matter? Your name is higher. Come on. Come on, Duncan. Your name is Jesus. Where'd that guy go? Right there. I call you Your name is higher. Come on. Your, Your name is higher than any other. Than any other. Your, name. Your name is Jesus. That's all right. That's Your all right. Name I call, I call you Lord. Amazing. I never really understood all that happened to that man. He, he got an amazing miracle and we missed what it was, I think. It was an accident, right? Is that your understanding? When he was 16 years old, he had brain damage. His oh. hand was crippled and he had short-term memory loss. Like after five minutes, he sometimes doesn't remember. So you saw something happen to him tonight. I was out trying to reach my dad. My sister is trying to connect my father to me, so I missed him. But I heard his voice, and I saw him on the screen. He was almost hanging from the ceiling up here, I tell you he that. Was, he, was, he has been waiting for this for 18 years. He's 34 now. He had the accident when he was 16. He has seen uh, angels. He was in a coma for four months after the accident. His family is Christian. The mother was praying. He was sent back to her because his mother was crying. Oh, my. So he absolutely has been waiting for this miracle and this breakthrough for 18 years. So praise God for that. I, I missed it, but I will, I guess, see it on YouTube. You keep trying to get your father. I, I am trying. My sister is trying Hungary. to call him, yes. Amazing. Ma'am. We don't know. See, that's the thing about all of us here. We don't know the full scope of anybody's stuff. We see them get prayer. They go under the power if they do that. And, and we get great. And they say, wow, we don't know. He's been like that for 18 years. And he's hugging me, telling me that he's healed. He wants to be a pastor. He wants to be a pastor. So when do I talk to him healthy. after the meeting Amen. tonight? I'll tell Amen. you that. Wow. Amen. How you doing over there? You doing all right? Are you yes, doing okay? God heal me, God heal me, and God renew me. God's coming <laughs> soon. Amen and amen. I believe it and I receive it. Amen and amen. His name is amazing. Amazing. Just I'm going to take time out and understand who's doing this. This is to bring you closer to Him. We're not, we all can't be like Him, but, but we can be expressive of our gratitude. We can become more public with it less ashamed more bold more pronounced the end is near the, the end of things as we know it I should say as we know it this lady here has been down for probably what 15 minutes this limes they, they burrow into your system these things and 
They say it comes from a deer, but I think it comes from more than that. It comes from the devil. Osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis. Where are you hurting, ma'am? In my, in my knees. Is it hurting mostly. now? Um, what? They, like they're crunched. They were. Is it hurting they, now, though? Ma'am, is it hurting? It's a simple a question. It can't be hurting that bad if it takes you that long. I think you already got healed. Walk over there for me. Just walk over there. Pick your knees up. Pick your knees up in the earth. Hey, hey, wait. Hey, don't forget us over here. How's those knees feel? It, good. Uh, a little bit like ligaments and that kind of a little tight. He's touched you. He's touched you. Without me touching you, he has touched you. I got new cartilage in that that knee on 2016 at Selwyn. You got more than when that you than came. to where? To Selwyn. Oh, okay. Ma'am, ma'am, that's, that's worth testifying about. They were bone on bone for the, um, August, or June 8, Touch her, just touch her. Touch, oh. When you go down, leave me up here. Don't take me with you. I'm, I'm not supposed to. Some of you are grabbing onto me. I'm not supposed to go. That's not in the rule book. doesn't say that. Come on. She's got her dad from Hungary. Yep. Come on, tell me now. Introduce me to your father. This is Billy Berg, Pastor Billy Berg, a gyógyító szolgálattal rendelkezik. And what's his name? István. István. István, this is Billy Berg. Can you hear me? Hallod? He doesn't speak much English. Hallod? Yeah, he can hear you. Tell him I'm going to pray and the pain's going to go away. Tell him. Imádkozni fog és a fájdalom el fog volni. He's scheduled for hip surgery for next month. Tell him the pain's going to leave that hip side tonight. Let the miracle presence I hope you say the right thing. The miracle presence. These interpreters, you got to trust them. It didn't take me that long to say that, see? Say she's going to be healed tonight. There may not be any surgery. Every hand up, come on. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to go clear the hungry tonight. From Toronto to Hungary. And take away his pain. Heal all the inflammation. Create new senyu. Send you. Just say send you. Create new muscle tissue. No more bone on bone. All the inflammation gone. Right now. Right now. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, somebody. Strings, give me some strings. Wow. Wow. Run down that aisle. Just run. 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 Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. How you doing, sir? This your wife? A friend you just met. Where'd you meet her at? Where'd you meet her at? Right here, touching Toronto. She asked, she come and congratulated me for my healing. Said she had the same thing. She's a little nervous to come up here, so I said, I'll take. The same thing that the disc between the two discs narrowed the space. So, so your back is hurting. Just, yeah. It hurts now. Not now, but it's not now. What do you mean, not now? Not recently, but uh, it comes out like uh, time to time, like every maybe five months or something like that. Put your hands up. There's a bone density issue here. Bone density. God strengthening your bones. That's the power right there. That was the power. That was the power. I said it. I said that was the mighty power. I said it. 
Come on, somebody give God a shout. Oh. You know, one of the greatest things you can do after you get a touch like this is with your own mouth say, I receive. The devil's waiting to see if you're receiving. You got to agree with it. Precious lady right here, precious. Be nice to her, right? Wow, wow. She's on the phone talking to Hungry right there. Yes, ma'am. For my daughter, what's the matter? Natalia, she has a SIBO, very bad disease in the dentist sign, overgrowing. Where's she, she at now? She's home. Touch she does oh. touch. 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 There's the power. Wow. 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 That's called the gradual fall right there. The gradual <laughs> She, you yielded. I'm glad you yielded. Your daughter's being touched. Your daughter's being touched. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I didn't believe this, I'd never even attempt this. You'd have to be crazy to do this. To spread false hope? How evil can you be? But on that day in 1962... Billy Burke was on the floor just like this. 1962. Cancer left my whole body. I believe in this. I believe in this. I believe in this. What's going on here? A testimony. Um, you know, go ahead. Yeah, I'll just testify to what God was doing when I was on the floor. Yes. Um, I went down. I've been believing God for my eyes. I was had yes. a lot of damage when I was young. And uh, I've just been believing and not seeing any change. But when I went down under the power, my eyes were sealed shut. And my eyes were, like, moving around in my head. Now, I can't say that I see any better. But, I mean, definitely God was doing something in behind my eyes. Well, that's where glaucoma is. It's pressure. Glaucoma is behind the eye, the pressure behind the eye. He's touched you. Yeah, I, I believe he has. Get ready for the full manifestation. Oh. Wow. Come on. Arthritis in her shoulders. Arthritis well, where? I'll be worsening it. And thank God that he lifts me. That he came the fresh. Because I couldn't lift my arms before. You couldn't lift her yeah. arms before. Without the pain. And it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Then sings my soul. My soul. Come on, how great. How great thou art. Seasonal affective how disorder. I, like I feel very depressed in, in the mornings and I have trouble sleeping. And that mighty touch. Hold on, mighty touch. My, my Savior God to thee. thee. How, how great thou art. How great thou art. How bones in each ear. Three tiny little bones. Okay? And believe it or not, diet is connected to that. The volume, the decibels of music and equipment is, is connected to that. As we age, those bones become very fragile. This man has had a fracture of these bones. And God's going to heal it. God's going to heal it. That might be proud of You got it. He got it. Uh, 
powerful. Thank you. It opened Thank right you, up. God. It opened up. Yes. You know, if you believe that, you should be. Come on. Come on, you need to really give God a shout. Come, sweetheart. Come, come, come. How you doing tonight? Great. What brings you here? Well, I met you in April. Anna brought me. I was separate. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was measured 4.7. You prayed for me, and it reduced to 0 0.8 in the breast and 0 0.7 in the lymph nodes. Come I on! Have, come on! Come on! I have Come on, shout, scream, I come on. I continued to do well. I did another MRI, it continued to decrease in August to 0 0.7. Keeps going down and down and down and down. Now I'm going for surgery tomorrow. I went on Friday, they did an ultrasound. The radiologist said, oh my God, there's no mass. <laughs> Somebody, come on! cancer free there's no spread this is done in Jesus name this is done this is done this is done this is why we do touching Toronto right here right here I mean if this don't get your spiritual blood moving I, I want to hear about your dad in Hungary too I've been screaming. We did meetings in Fort Worth this week, in Dallas. We was on Daystar here the other night. So I've been screaming all week. And I was saying, oh, God, let me at least get to Toronto with a... And look at this story. I mean, every story matters. We don't want to push one up over the other. But when you get to the C word... See, something about that C word that is like, yeah, what about cancer, Billy Burke? Well, right here. So what do, you deal, what do you do with this if you're standing here thinking, I don't know about this? And here's this girl who comes right in here in the midst of all of us. Probably shocked the doctors. Look at her over here dancing around here. I think it's amazing. I think it is so amazing. He's such a good God. Come on, He is such a good God. Let's sing Angus D. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it, everybody. Hallelujah. For the Lord. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Come on, everybody.
worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Where'd she go? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Excuse me. Where's the, where'd the girl go that I was just talking to? Come to me. Come over here. I want you to come up here. Let her through here. What a story this is. Where do you go to church? Do you have a church? Where? Toronto. Where? C3 Toronto. What's the name of it? C3 Toronto. C3. It's, a, it's a brand new church. It's, it's a wonderful church. It's bringing a lot of young people praising God. It's amazing. An Do amazing me a church. favor tonight. Go home tonight, tomorrow morning. Hit your Facebook. Tell people about tomorrow night. And tell them what you heard. That's what the Bible says. We can't but help speak about the things we've seen and heard. This is unrehearsed. Tell somebody. Amazing. Amazing. And you went in to get that checkup and they said it's not there. Amazing. When I count to three, let's give God praise. Come on. One, two, three. Come on. Come on. Come on, give me praise. Every hand up all over the place. Come on, I want you to accept Jesus tonight because it would be futile, futile to have a miracle, hear about a miracle, see a miracle, and still end up in hell possible because you must be born again no exceptions must not be must be a catholic not must be a baptist must be born not no no not must go to a good church no you must be born again because of what jesus did at the cross say it with me the cross shook the whole earth shook heaven as well and it is my signature place to give my life to a suffering servant he came from heaven and he gave his life shed his blood to wash away my sins he's my only savior I accept him tonight into my heart into my life I want to learn about him. He's my miracle worker. And I declare my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Our, our Father. We'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. We're going to close with the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Father, we are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us and not. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver. But deliver us from evil. Oh. For thy.
if you prayed that prayer, you, you, you accepted Christ tonight, or you decided to re rededicate your life to Christ tonight, go to the back corner and see and that's she has a, a, I guess an orange jacket on back there. We have a, something for you, a little gift. Uh, those are for those that are just commi committing their life to Christ tonight and those that have rededicated life. We want to make sure you get on the right track so she has something to give you. God bless you, Drive Safe. Check out the book table, product table. There's new product there tonight, I believe. Drive safely and come back with five others tomorrow night. Let them know what's going on right here at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Doors open at 6.15 p.m. God bless you. Drive safe. We'll see you tomorrow night.